So when I take him out, I want you guys to say hi, Bubba. Hi, hi Bubba. Bubba. So, Bubba is an alligator snapping turtle, and alligator snapping turtles come from Alabama and Louisiana. They're primarily found in just four river systems throughout that area because a lot of their habitat has been dwindled down because of habitat destruction, people building, filling in swamps and, and uh, marshes and things like that. And also because people down south like to eat. Okay, so what do we got here? So this right here is a forest cobra. Okay. They are the longest species of true cobra in the world. True cobras belong to the genus Naja. This right here is a venomoid, which is why I'm handling them a little bit more carefree than a normal cobra. A venomoid is a snake that underwent a procedure to actually affect the venom glands. We use him for educational purposes. We do not condone the venomoid procedure. It is not a snake that we had one done on. It was actually given to us. Somebody else had the procedure done on it that was not supposed to have it. Do we get a lot of snakes from um, people that shouldn't have them? Occasionally we do, and Snuggles here is one of these prime examples. She's, what's she doing right now? She's setting up. She's trying to intimidate you a little bit. So these guys are from Africa where there are a lot of megafauna, which are your elephants, rhinos, and your heavy hooved animals like Cape Buffalo. And their big fear is that they're gonna get stepped on, so their primary defense is to hood up and hiss at you. And if that does not work, then they run and try to hide in up trees, in holes, pretty much anywhere that they feel safe and out of the way, and their last resort is to bite. So, so they don't want to hurt us, they want to get away from us. That is exactly right. And this guy right here in the wild has one of the most toxic venoms. He belongs to the family Elapidae. Elapids predominantly have what are called neurotoxic venoms, which affect the central nervous system. Uh -huh. And they are very fast acting, typically within an hour or two, you will be dead. Oof. But in that hour or two, something like an elephant, after getting bit, still has a lot of time to obviously stomp this thing into the dust and do some damage to it. Which is why they are so hesitant to bite. It's definitely a last resort, huh? Exactly. And we're, we're gonna try to bring more venomous videos to you guys because we have a lot of stuff that you guys have not seen on our YouTube channel But we're gonna take steps to make it safer to film and educate. That is exactly right We have more people being added to the venomous permit. I am one of them. I will not be handling actual venomous snakes like this I'll be handling them with hooks and only hooks And we are the only people in the in New Hampshire and one of the few in New England that are actually certified to handle venomous snakes and keep them So when I take them out, I want you guys to say hi, Bubba Hi, So, Bubba is an alligator snapping turtle, and alligator snapping turtles come from Alabama and Louisiana. They're primarily found in just four river systems throughout that area because a lot of their habitat has been dwindled down because of habitat destruction, people building, filling in swamps and, and uh, marshes and things like that. And also because people down south like to eat alligator snapping turtles. Uh, a lot of the Europeans who settled the south were uh, Catholic, which means that they couldn't eat fish on Fridays. So they actually classified turtles as fish so that they could eat them and not have to give up all of the meat. Uh, so these were very heavily hunted for a long time. and. The alligator snapping turtles are actually one of the longest living animals in the United States. Within the last few years, there was actually an alligator snapping turtle found with a musket ball from the Civil War lodged into the side of its shell. So you gotta figure that animal was big enough during the American Civil War to get shot with a gun and not die. So it couldn't have been small like one of these little guys right here. Aww. Little baby snapping turtle. It had to be pretty good size already. And then to continue to be found living today, it would have to be over 200 years old. So. The alligator snapping turtles have over 1,200 pounds per square inch of bite force in those jaws. So whatever goes in there is not coming back out. What's happening to him? Hi, this is a man I don't know here. Yeah, I'm gonna film him. That's all right. Hi. Come on, buddy. What's up? Hi, my name's Donnie. What's yours? Carlos. <laughs> Carlos, yes. you're hanging out with Black Dragons, I see. Hanging out with these guys, and they don't want to leave me. Oh. Kevin told me to film you, but I don't exactly know why. You well, look, <laughs> well, look what's on his shoulder and stuff. I got a bunch of. Look. Oh, okay. Look. Oh, look at this. Hi. Hi, what's your name? Harper. And you like black dragons? Yes. Do you guys have any at home? No, we don't. You should get one. It's going down your side right here. I got it. Okay. There we go. Oh, uh oh. And it's down. There you go. Are you trying to convince your dad to get you one of these? Yeah. What's your favorite reptile facility? Nerd? What's your favorite friend over here? Kevin. Kevin. All right. So can you grab this guy? I come to see Kevin. Nice. You came to see Kevin? Okay. cow with multitude of genes, but at the very least,
cow with golden child. And she's so precious. Soak our animals before we ship them out because we want to make sure they're not dehydrated. And it's also, uh, you just want to make sure you want to give them everything to avoid as much stress as possible. Clearly, shipping these animals is stressful. On them, they have no idea what's going on. Another thing you want to be very careful about, when is this animal fed last? You don't want this animal digesting anything when you ship it because uh, then you can't guarantee temps. And it's stress. If this animal is still trying to digest a food item while it's being shipped, sometimes they'll throw it up and then that can add a whole new problem. So another thing, I had a little bit of shed on this snake. And then I'll just, I just wanted to get rid of that. Boy, this is gonna be a crazy looking snake. Cowering ticks, I just, I go crazy for them. And I haven't mentioned who's getting the snake, but this is gonna go to a great, great place. And this actually came from my buddy Kevin Curley, Kevin Curley, Kevin Curley over at New England Reptile Distributors where I get all kinds of really cool stuff. Here's his card right here. I will put a link in the description. He actually puts out some really great videos on Instagram as well as on YouTube. I mean, he's kind of a guru when it comes to animal behavior and really figuring things out. One of my dearest friends. So, ooh, doggy. Ow, ow, ow. ow, ow, ow. Just got me too. Oh my gosh. I'm dripping blood right here. By the way, I'm getting blood all over this because you're saying that we're feeding raw stuff to our animals, even though you said in a video something about cooking the raw meat ahead of time? All right, guys, we generally get all of our meat for our monitors, for our breeding monitors, for our raise-up monitors from one source, and that source is proven to be very clean. My point is this. In the videos where I'm talking about, let's say you go to the grocery store and you buy chicken parts and you buy fish and beef and stuff like that, you're getting it from a place that literally deals with meat from all different sources. So when the, the people are butchering, right? so they start with a large volume of meat and they're chopping it all up, they're taking out the fat, they're taking out things they don't like the way it looks. What they're doing is they're touching all sorts of meat sources. So what you do is you increase your likelihood of getting some kind of contamination. So basically if you take the meat you're getting from a grocery store, I'm just trying to be very safe. If you put it into a microwave and you nuke it for a bit, at least 40 seconds or more, but get it so there's some heat and get it so basically there is some kind of cooking action. That's gonna greatly reduce, if not render, the salmonella or the E. coli or whatever that can be contaminated on the meat to be basically harmless to your animal. So I am talking about extra caution is really what I'm talking about. So you need to understand when I'm, we're dealing with meat, we're buying large volumes of meat. It's always from the same source. It's not from the source after it's been played with and all the different stuff. So just so you know, when I get my meat from the store, and Donnie, you see it, I start cooking it. I give you a, a lot of times a volume of meat that's been partially cooked because I'm scared. If I'm going to teach people, I'm going to try to be as cautious as possible, and I'm not going to want to give them a bunch of gibberish and telling them to ever use the stuff from a grocery store straight raw like that. It, it, in some cases can work fine, in other cases it can actually be a great way to give your animal salmonella, E. coli, some kind of gastrointestinal nightmare. Let me ask you something, a lot of our stuff's frozen in big heaps, like we get it in freezing big amounts. Freezing will not kill it. It will not kill it, Guys, okay. Freezing is not going to kill your salmonella, okay. but nuking in a microwave a bit, that's why you see some of the meat that I give you in the smaller packages and it's, it's kind of gray around the edges because yep. I've already nailed it with the microwave. So I just put it in the microwave, let it cook for a little bit, you know, not too long. Something like a chicken breast. If I put it in there for or a couple chicken breasts for like 40 seconds, I think 40 seconds is ample to start the cooking process which will basically kill things like salmon oil. Gotcha. Okay? All right, that answers uh, a bunch of questions in the comments. Thank you, Kevin. It was it was really hard to get Kevin to answer this Donnie question. Donnie keeps sucking. I will keep sucking. Ke Kevin's you very... You keep commenting on Donnie sucking. He's getting very upset. You guys yeah. are being mean. He's going to fire me. It's great. No, All right. That's Rob. He's important here. Featured in multiple YouTube videos. I've never seen him mad. I've never seen Rob ever mad, ever. That's because I don't get mad. I don't let the world upset me. No, you do not. Emily's girlfriend gets mad at everything. Mad at everything. <laughs> Have you guys met Emily? Yeah. She's kind of crazy, right? <laughs> I'm not crazy. She's, just She's very different. Attention, everybody. Just want to let you guys know. Kevin's doing a live stream right now. You notice how he doesn't have lights on? Pretty epic, right? Professionalism.
It's got the echoes in the room. Oh my god.